Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV, Tipperary Camogie's brand new YouTube channel. The good news is Camogie was finally back this week with the opening rounds of Littlewoods Iron Division 1 and 2 leagues. The bad news is Cork Tipperary suffered defeat to the hands of Cork in both the Division 1 and Division 2. However, there was plenty of positives and lost look forward to for the year ahead. In today's show, we look back on both the senior and intermediate game and get all the post-match reaction. First up, Tipperary and Cork in Division 1 league in Parky Cueve. On Saturday, the Tipperary senior team travelled to Parky Cueve in Cork to take on Cork in the opening round of the Littlewoods Iron Division 1 league. Caught the van, got Tip off the mark with her first of seven points from place balls. Tip led two points to no score, but Cork quickly established a lead after six minutes when Anya Slattery was dispossessed and Amy O'Connor finished to the net. Both sides went on to exchange further points with Nicole Walsh, Clodagh McIntyre and Caught the van all getting on the scoreboard. Caught was her usual reliable self from free-taking duties, but also finished the game with three points from play. Cork, however, continued to threaten, and their speed, movement and short passing started to cause serious trouble for the Tipperary rearguard. On the 30th minute, a second goal for Cork, this time from Fiona Keaton, made Cork had a deserved leave, lead of 2-7 to 6 points at the break. Tipperary were much improved in the second half. But the Cork half back line and midfield pairing of Ashley Thompson and Katrina Mackey continued to show their class. A second Amy O'Connor goal on the 45th minute put the result beyond doubt. Tip did hit a pur- purple patch with five points on the trash, bringing the group gap down to five points, including points from Nicole Walsh, Irina Friday, and Caught the Van. Bill Milani introduced a number of substitutions who all played well in the second half. However, it wasn't enough and Cork ran out impressive winners on a scoreline of 3.14 to 16 points. Next up for the Tipperary team is a home game against Waterford this Saturday at 2pm. This game will take place in, in Clonmel commercials and Waterford will be looking to get their league campaign off to a winning start. Well, a uh, win will be vital for Tipperary to, to have a chance of progressing to the quarter final. Uh, round one today against Cork. How do you think it went? Uh, I suppose kind of definitely a game of two halves. To, to, to use the old cliche, like uh, look, we let dominate. Uh, we let Cork dominate us in the first half. We just worked in their faces enough, and uh, you know we'll probably yard off them. Um, um, Definitely for the first half, but I thought the second half we improved an awful lot. Uh, we were on top, especially in the last 15. You know, I think we won that. But uh, overall, look, we've got a lot of improvement to do. Um, we have a lot of positives out of it at the end as well. But um, look, we know where we are. We needed to meet somebody to see where we are at this stage of the season as well. You know, we scored five points in a row there at one stage uh, without reply. It was a great, great see Tip getting on top there during the middle of the second half. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they, and genuinely they did, and they, they, they changed when we just started playing in their faces and putting pressure on them, pressurising the puck out. Um, you know. Know, and um, I thought we were hurling really well at that stage. Um, then there was an interruption and the kind of momentum dipped for a couple of minutes again. You know, but um, we finished well. As I said, loads of positives. Like I mean, we got a couple of um, uh, new girls as well there today. And, uh, Queen of McCarthy, my husband. You know, and we players back from last year. It's just like an all match fitness early in the season yet. You know. Yeah, so it's Waterford next week and probably a must-win game, Bill. Yeah, well, we have to win it to go on and, uh, and, uh, and get to a quarter final, so there is pressure on it now. Um, but, I mean, look, we're used to it. We're, we've been in these situations before. We're, 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 we're good enough to do it. And, um, you know, we'll just um, do our job and get it done next week. Next up is the meeting of Tiberi and Cork in the Division 2 League. Um, this game was streamed live but on the Tiberi YouTube channel, making it the first ever game to be streamed on our YouTube channel. After the match, I caught up with fullback Christina Brennan and I also got the reaction of third assertion Katie McCormick who watched this game on behalf of the Camogie Report. This year, the Tipperary Intermediate team are, are managed by third assertion Keen Tracy. They welcomed Cork to the Drummond and Shea grounds in the rag for the opening round of the Littlewood Irons Division 2 League on Saturday. Cork had the opening score of the game with a point from midfielder Rachel Harty. Tipperary responded well and soon, soon the sides were level again thanks to a Jill Ann Quirk. The move was started by Courtney Ryan who burst out of defence. She found Jenny Grace. Jenny, who was influential throughout the day, picked out a run by Jill Ann Quirk and the Toomey Vara forward finished with a lovely strike over the bar. It was Cork.
Porto, who went on to dominate the next 15 minutes and led by 4 points, 7 points to 3, approaching 20 minutes. Hayley Ryan then stood over to take a free. And disaster struck when it dropped short and full forward for Nuna Level got the slightest of touch touches to pull it past there quickly in the Tipperary goal. Cork continued to dominate the first half and at half time they led 110 to 5 points. But it was a renewed Tipperary to come out in the second half. Mary Burke linking up well here with Gillian Cork for her second score of the game. This was followed up with another score after the mistake by the Cork keeper. Her puck out went straight to Emma Carey, who found Sinead Mara at the end of the square. Sinead had a great game, fouled many times throughout, but on this occasion, she laid off the pass to substitution Gemma Fox. And Gemma got Tipperary on the scoreboard once again with this fine point. Tipperary had eaten into Cork's lead and it was only three points separating the side when Eva Hurley, the Cork corner forward, got past the Tipperary defence, soloed in, and then found substitution Claude Finn at the edge of the square, and she finished to the back of the net to, to finish any of Tipperary hopes of a win. Cork ran out winners on a final scoreline of 2.13 to 14 points. Christina Brennan, uh, Tipperary's intermediate full-back. Um, Christina, great game, Komogi. Disappointed though, uh, beating in the end 2.13 to 14 points. Yeah, look, it's always disappointing, especially when you're playing your home ground, but... You know, there's a lot of um, positives we've taken from the matches. Our first first match out since last year, a lot of new rules and a lot of new girls. So there's a lot of positives to take from this match, yeah. And um, you were down a half time, 110 to 5 points. Uh, you had a fantastic third quarter. Um, I think you got 4 or 5 points on uh, uh, without a response from Cork. And um, then just Cork got that crucial goal. Yeah, look, we came in at half time, we, we reset. Um, we needed we needed a break. We needed to refocus, and we came out hopping off the ground, and then just one one ball across, and you know, quick 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 um, puck and back in net, and just turn the game around again. And look, that will come with experience and playing with the girls again to get the focus back and to know maybe a bit more talking and a bit more driving on as well. But sure, look, that will come with with a lot of practice. And like you said, a new management, a new team, and um, missed out on championship last year with the COVID restrictions. So, like, loads of positives, a good mix of youth and more experienced players in the team as well. Yeah, definitely. And badly needed as well. It's good to come into fresh start. As you said, we missed out last year. So, for, you know, two years since we since we played properly in championship. And it's great to have new management. It brings a new energy, new girls, um, and a lot of older girls as well, which, you know, keeps the focus and drives everyone on. I think... I think even though we're together such a short while, I think you can really see we're beginning to bond and get to know each other as players on and off the pitch. And I suppose, like you said, you're only back training a few weeks and I suppose a lot of that was kind of trials and, you know, the management deciding yeah. and finalising the uh, panel for the league. Definitely. And, like, you know, we had a few you know, in-house matches, but we haven't had any challenge matches. We haven't played other teams. And it's to get to know players and players have been moved around from different positions. And also, as look, there's new rules as well. Um, and we need to get used to that as well. When you're used to playing a certain way, and when you're in a match situation, it's a lot different to training, so a lot of positives. And next up, I think, is it Galway or Kerry? Galway, yeah, Galway next weekend, and then Kerry, yeah. Galway next weekend, and then Kerry. So games come and tick the fast. Yeah, yeah, and I think, do you know what? I think that was you as well. Now we refocus on Tuesday and ready to go again for the weekend, and I think this game has made us hungry now for more. And look, we'll learn from our mistakes, we'll regroup, and we'll push on now for the rest of the year. And I'm joined here now by Katie McCormick from Tardis Sarsfields just to look back on that intermediate game. Uh, Katie, a lot of positives, but I suppose at the end, disappointing result um, to lose 213 to 14 points. Yeah, uh, the positives, I suppose, were that second half performance. Tip came out. We were saying there at half time something needed to change, and Mary Burke came out in that second half and she really drove it on from midfield. Um, you're looking at Jenny Grace all the time to put over the freeze, but in. From play, you're looking at Gillan. Um, Gemma Fox came on there as a sub in the second half, scored from play. Sinead Marr in the last minute. Now, in the first and second half, Sinead Marr won a lot of frees for Jenny Grace. That has to be commended. But I suppose it was that goal there that in the second half that turned things back in Cork's favour, and that's what was difficult to take because it was nearly it was out of the out of the run of the game. It, it came as a shock to everyone, I suppose, as we were watching a tip had scored five points from play in a row. 
Yeah, definitely there. I thought in the second half we were getting excited there. The, the third quarter, we were, I think we went four or five points uh, with no reply from Cork and we really had them rattled. And like that, just the goal came against the run of the play. But I suppose you, you touched on it there. Jenny Gray scored nine points, eight from freeze. And um, other than that, then Jelan Cork, Gemma Fox and Sinead Maher, the only three players to score from play. While in the first half, you know, Cork, I think maybe four, four of their six forwards had scored maybe by half time. So the scores just seemed to come quick, easier for Cork. Yeah, they did. And even then, Cork started bringing on subs. And we were all amazed that they were bringing on subs in the forward line because they were, I think, of the six, uh, four of them had scored from play and they'd scored multiple times from play. Uh, the Cork full forward there, I um, can't think of her name now, Fanula Neville, had scored 1-1. One, one. And we were shocked, but they brought on this girl, Clodagh Finch, came on, she scored the goal against the run of play. And that was the difference. They were just, they were materialising on their opportunities. And I suppose tip of times weren't. They were making up great passes of play. They were running forward with the ball and then it was just dropping short or going wide. And it was just disheartening, I suppose, for them. But um, Tip really took a, a great um, boost out, I suppose, of the, we saw the first time this year, well, uh, I suppose because it's the first match that we've seen but it was the one-on-one -on -one shot with the goalie for the penalty and I don't know if it got into the Cork's uh, free taker's head or what happened but she put it to the left turn wide and that was what gave tip the momentum nearly then then they scored four in a row after that yeah, definitely had a big bearing on the game. Um, I suppose, uh, uh, to be fair to Tipperary, a new management, they're only back training a few weeks and I suppose a lot of that time was, was used to look at players and finalise a panel and a lot of trials and panel matches. And, um, you know, but you could see as the game progressed, starting to gel together, getting used to playing together and I suppose we can expect a lot more from this team. Yeah, and do you know what was really exciting is like that, Gemma Fox came on. I think Keane Tracy had her as a minor. Um, you're looking at Emer Burke there coming on from Clonolty, Ross Moore. These young players, that's what we want. We just need them to be like like what Gemma did. Came on, got her a point. She was looking up. She was making plays. That's what you want to be seeing. Because like, we're always going back to the same players. Jenny Grace, uh, Courtney Ryan, Sabrina Larkin, if she wasn't injured. They're the ones we've been lying on too long. We need these other younger players to step up now. And I suppose that's why it's great to have Keane involved because he was over the minors. He knows what's coming through. You know, and if you're looking at the future with this team, this is a, it's a building block for senior, I suppose, as well. Now, they want to have their own glory, and we hope that they do go well this year, but it is the building block for senior, and it's where girls get their opportunities. And were you impressed with the Cork side? Do you think they'll have a big part to play in the Championship this year? Yeah, I think they will, but they're beatable. Like, compared to two years ago when Tip played them in the Munster final, uh, I went down to see it, I think it was down in Mallow, and that team looked unbeatable. This Cork team looked beatable. I don't know if that's a tip of improved that much, but or if that Cork team isn't as good. But it, it, it looks like, well, look, we're, we're well even. If those two goals hadn't gone in and they were both nearly against the run of play, it could have been a lot more um, in Tip's favour. Yeah, I found in the second half, the Cork, uh, I suppose their backs didn't, you know, didn't stand out as well. But I think it was because maybe Tip up their work rate in the forwards and put them under pressure. You know, they looked very impressive in the first half when, when probably Tip weren't working hard enough. Yeah, they, they, they kind of... they. The, that first 15 minutes they kind of fell asunder they lost their, ga their game plan and everything now in the second 15 minutes of the first half or tip we felt like Courtney Ryan was after dropping back nearly a bit too far and she was letting the room in so you, teams lose their heads That's it's the first game of the league that's going to happen you're going to forget your game plan you're only learning new things you're implementing new tactics that's going to happen so everyone has their off 15 minutes or 10 minutes their down moments but um, yeah it, looked, it, look, it, it was an interesting watch uh, a lot of impressive performances on both sides, but I'm going to put you on the spot today. Is there, uh, uh, put you on the spot now? Is, is there anyone in particular you would say a player of the match for from Tipperary's perspective? Um, your mind goes straight to the scores. That's Jenny Gray straight away. Um, Jenny Gray, sorry. Uh, nine points. Yeah, very impressive. Yeah, very nine good points for play. Yeah, yeah. I, I think my old club mate Emma Carey had a good game. Now she got hooked a couple of times. Probably needs to tighten up her swing a bit. But uh, it looked positive. Like Courtney Ryan, if she hadn't dropped back for those 15 minutes, maybe she would have been in line for it. Mary Burke from Drum and Inch, like she nearly, she nearly, her, her energy was what the tip team were feeding off of when they were making that comeback. So uh, look, I'm going to go for Mary Burke. She wasn't supposed to be starting today. She was in because Sabrina Larkin was injured. I'm going to go with Mary. Both teams will be looking to get their campaigns back on track this Saturday. Um, the Division One team take on Waterford in Clamel at 2 p.m. on Saturday. This is a three-team group, so a win on Saturday is crucial for our senior team. Um, the game will be streamed live on the Camogie Association's YouTube channel. In Division 2, Tipperary travel to Kenny Park in and Wright to take on Galway. Uh, like Tip, Galway were beaten in their opening round against Kerry, where they lost out 14 points to 1-8. So both teams will be gunning for a victory on Saturday. 
That's all for this week's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, give us a like and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.